This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. I'll tell you all about our rain chances, but I'm sure you'd like to hear about our snow chances as well. People who live in areas that often flood are afraid they're going to lose their homes. What a letter from the Department of Natural Resources says and how many residents are planning to protect their investment. Hundreds of thousands of people rent in the Indianapolis metro area, but some renters fall victim to unfair landlords. The plans protect renters. What it means for you. I was just devastated to hear that it got into the waterway. Jet fuel gets into local waterways after a fiery tanker crash last week. The plan to clean it up and the impact on wildlife. First here at 6 o'clock, rain across central Indiana now, but we're tracking the potential for snow later this week. We need to get right to Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. Kevin, when do you think the snow could arrive here? <laughs> I'm giggling because you say rain and everybody goes, oh, yeah. But then snow? snow? Yep. What? Snow? <laughs> what are we talking about? So there's a winter storm watch, northern Illinois, northern Indiana. I think that starts as early as tomorrow night into Wednesday, and we'll have more on that. I do think central Indiana will see some accumulating snow as well, but it's all about rain next 24 hours after the snow Wednesday it's to cold and dry conditions as we get to Thursday and Friday that kind of summarizes it in the big picture departing area of rain it was a blanket of rain and at times fairly heavy that's exiting northeast Indiana we'll just have scattered light showers for a while this is winding up and kind of picking up in intensity a little bit it'll drift to the north and east and that's what I'm talking about with the return of rain especially in the southern half of the state north to south temperatures about where they should be this time of year Gary's at 37 but for 42 in Peru to 47 down in Evansville. Just want to show you tomorrow as we get through tonight into tomorrow morning. There's the return of the rain in the southern half of the state, specifically a little heavier there. Then as we go through the day tomorrow, it's about rain showers during the daylight hours. But as we get to tomorrow night, we'll start to transition to some snow. We'll get more into snowfall potential coming up. Could affect thousands of other families. It has a, a great potential. Well, people who live in areas that often flood are worried they could lose their homes. This comes after some residents received notice from the Department of Natural Resources, a letter instructing them to not only leave their houses, but also to tear them down. RTV 6's Troy Washington is working for you to explain how the homeowners are hoping to protect their investment. Deborah Beasley built her legacy as the well-known owner of Beasley's Orchard in Danville. But beyond the corn mazes and field trips put on through the years, she had another passion. This was a lifelong dream of my mom's to have a little family getaway place. In 2017, Beasley fulfilled her dream by purchasing the Martin County cabin for her family to make memories in. In December, she passed away unexpectedly, and this family feels part of keeping her memory alive lies in keeping her cabin standing. She worked for a long time to save up for this cabin. For this family, there's something standing in the way of the grieving process. They say the Department of Natural Resources wants their cabin gone. It basically says that the DNR had determined that this home was in a floodway and that they say there's a loss of life situation at risk if the home continues to exist and, um, and that there is no choice other than to remove the home. The family got a letter last spring. According to them, the DNR wouldn't budge or work with them. They want the cabin gone and has threatened to find them the longer it stays standing. So not only are you out your home that you've, you've been paying for for 10, 20 years, you also have to pay to have it torn down. This family isn't the only family in a position to lose a lot. It could affect thousands of other families. It has a, a great potential. Mark Krieger has lived along the White River since the 70s and doesn't intend on moving anywhere else. They'll carry me out of here boot first. <laughs> Or float me out. <laughs> he hasn't been contacted by the DNR, but after we told him about other families being told to remove their homes or else, he didn't agree with that process. Right now, Senate Bill 433 could change things. The bill would keep the Department of Natural Resources from exercising their authority to remove a home in a floodway under certain circumstances. Even if the bill does make it past the House's Natural Resources Committee, this family still won't get to keep their home. But they would get their money back to reinvest into a new dream cabin to keep Beasley's lifelong dream alive elsewhere. Working for you, Troy Washington, 
RTV6. And we've reached out to the lawmaker handling this and we are waiting for an official response. DNR tells us due to pending legislation and an ongoing legal review by an administrative law judge, the Department of Natural Resources cannot comment on this matter at this time. Hundreds of thousands of people rent their homes and apartments in Indianapolis and tonight the City County Council will vote on an initiative that could help protect renters. If this initiative is passed, an additional $250,000 would be used to create an informational hotline for renters and will provide legal services when necessary. But another plan to help Indianapolis tenants could be in jeopardy. A mandate to force landlords to inform renters of their rights may be illegal statewide after a bill in the state house was amended today. The amendment prohibits cities from creating their own ordinances about landlords. The amended bill will go to the Indiana House next, so it's not a done deal. All new at six, we are now learning jet fuel from last week's tanker crash has been found in local waterways and on on wildlife and cleanup is now underway. A local wildlife organization sent these photos to us. They tell us they took in three ducks this weekend that were covered in fuel. The ducks were found near the Pleasant Run Creek in Irvington. You can still see the fuel in the water there and smell it in the air. The Indiana Department of Environmental Management says the fuel got into the creek through the interstate stormwater system. They tell us there are no drinking water intakes along Pleasant Run Creek and they are working with the Marion County Health Department to oversee cleanup. Some people who live in the area tell us they are worried about the long-term impacts this spill could have. Frightening to hear because I walk the park almost every day and I'm enjoying all this wildlife and I'm afraid it's going to come to an end. According to the Indiana Department of Environmental Management, the trucking company will be responsible for all costs associated with this cleanup. State police are investigating a deadly underride crash that happened over the weekend in Vigo County. An underride crash is when a car slides underneath a large truck or semi-trailer. Call 6 Investigates has raised questions for years about whether federal standards for those guards are enough to keep drivers safe. ISP says the driver of a Jeep failed to observe traffic slowing down on I-70 and ran into the back of a semi-tractor trailer. The driver, 32-year-old Ashley Williams of Illinois, was pronounced dead at the scene of the crash. Federal lawmakers filed the Stop Underrides Act, which will allow creative engineers to put effective underride protections on every truck and help end preventable underride tragedies. However, Congress has yet to pass the legislation. There is now officially a new president of Franklin College. The school in Johnson County has named Carrie Prather as its president. That's according to a release from the college's board of trustees. Prather is the longtime athletic director and head men's basketball coach at Franklin College. He has served as acting president since January 14th, but he is now officially the president. Franklin College fired Thomas Minor as president last month. Police arrested Minor in Door County, Wisconsin in January. According to court documents, Minor used a dating app to send sexually explicit explicit messages to someone that he, he thought was a 15-year-old boy, but he was actually talking to an undercover police officer. He told detectives that he knew that he was meeting up with a 15-year-old and that he was going to, quote, mentor him. Franklin College fired Minor after his arrest. He returns to court in April. A high school guidance counselor in Marion is accused of having an inappropriate online relationship with a young girl. That tops the RTV6 news feed. The Wells County Sheriff's Office arrested 46-year-old Ryan C. Vermillion on Sunday. He is charged with 12 counts of vicar vicarious sexual gratification and 12 counts of child exploitation. The Wells County Sheriff's Office said deputies arrested Vermillion after an investigation allegedly found an inappropriate online relationship between him and a female juvenile. Vermillion who is a school counselor at Marion High School has been suspended pending termination. That's according to Marion County, Marion Community Schools. Harvey Weinstein's legal team says they will appeal his conviction. Today, a jury convicted Weinstein of rape and sexual assault against two women, and he was led to prison in handcuffs. The charges carry up to 29 years behind bars. Sentencing is set for March 11th. The movie executive helped bring to the screen such Oscar winners as Goodwill Hunting, Pulp Fiction, The King's Speech, Silver Linings Playbook and Shakespeare in Love. A heartfelt goodbye for NBA legend Kobe Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter Gianna. 
Thousands of fans, family and friends gathered at the Staples Center in Los Angeles for the memorial service officially being called a celebration of life. Beyonce kicked everything off with one of Kobe Bryant's favorite songs. The ceremony was held on a symbolic date, 224, the two numbers representing Kobe and Gianna's basketball jersey numbers. A free fall for the Dow Jones as the spread of the coronavirus threatens to damage the global economy. The Dow fell more than 1,000 points, the worst drop for the index in two years. The plunge also wiped out the Dow's gains so far in 2020. Rock band The Black Keys are coming to the Indy area as part of their Let's Rock Summer Tour. The group will perform at Ruoff Music Center on Noblesville on July 24th. Tickets for the show go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. A Southern Indiana school district is working to deal with a suspected vaping problem after multiple students and teachers have had to be transported to the hospital for illness in the past couple of weeks. Madison Consolidated Schools in Jefferson County says it has been briefing parents about the issue at Madison High School on a regular basis. According to the district, since February 6th, eight students and two teachers have been transported to the emergency room with symptoms linked to vaping. Madison Consolidated Schools has put together a plan to help combat the use of vaping devices on campus. The plan includes educating students, parents, and staff members, providing assistance to help prevent addiction, and an enhanced student disciplinary policy regarding vaping. Tonight we're showing how education can propel you into a career you love. There is a class where architecture students can look into the past to prepare for the future. This week the state of Indiana is preparing for a battle royale on the basketball court. It's round two for heated rivals IU and Purdue. The implications for both teams. Kevin? And we'll prepare for more rain and then some snow in the middle of the week. We'll focus on our Wednesday snow as temperatures turn colder for the second half of the week. We'll step our way through the timeline coming up. On the 2020 Ultima. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Hiring Hoosiers is RTV6's focus on linking you up with the skills and resources you land so you can land the job you want. And we love to find ways that education can take you into a career. Kelsey Anderson shows us a class where architecture students are taking an in-depth look into the history of local buildings in hopes that it will propel them into their future careers. For most of us, when we build something, it's usually with Legos and we're usually starting from scratch. But for architects, they're working on existing buildings, meaning they're working on fixing, adding, and repairing to what's already there. And that's why this class at Ball State University is so important because it's opening doors for future architects. Our oldest drawings probably go back to you know, 19, 1900, 1910 or so. The Columbus, Indiana Architectural Archives is filled with history of the city known for its unique architecture. That a lot of people just see a normal building and don't think twice of it, whereas a lot of the architects, you know, that's all that we see is the, are the buildings. And right now, architecture students at Ball State University are going through these old blueprints in hopes of making a virtual exhibit for people to visit so they can better understand the beauty of these old buildings. We're creating an exhibit um, about all of these different buildings. Um, and one of the big features that we focused on um, was how to communicate these details that we speak of every day, um, but the common person doesn't, doesn't know exactly what we're talking about. So breaking it down into basic features um, is a big component. It's kind of like knowing where you've come from in order to know where you're going to go. Kristen Berry is an assistant professor of architecture. She says this research is important for the future architects to do. A lot of the buildings they'll be working on as architects are going to be existing buildings. So it's important for them to know how to research, how to find those drawings so that they can work with them later and then incorporate some of those ideas into their new design. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. The exhibit will open on May 9th at the Visitor Center in Columbus. The augmented reality mobile app for the exhibit is not live yet, but Barry says once it is, you will be able to see their entire exhibit right on your phone. Make sure you're following our Hiring Hoosiers Facebook 
Facebook page for daily posts about job openings and all of our Hiring Hoosiers coverage. Just go to Facebook.com and search Hiring Hoosiers. Tomorrow you have a chance to stump Jeopardy's greatest champion of all time. Ken Jennings will be at DePaul University in Greencastle to speak as part of the school's open lecture series. It will feature a Q&A session where audience members can try to stump Jennings with their own trivia questions. Last month you saw Jennings win Jeopardy's The Greatest of All Time series right here on RTV6. Tomorrow night's event at DePaul begins at 7.30. It is free and open to the public, but you better get there early. There are no tickets and seating is first come, first serve. And I think tomorrow night is better weather-wise than it would be on a Wednesday. Let me point out, starting late tomorrow afternoon through Wednesday afternoon, winter storm watch for much of north-central Illinois, cutting across the Hoosier State uh, as you get closer to the state line with Michigan, and then much of lower Michigan. This is not set in stony in May, move a little more to the south or shift a little more to the north, and we may have advisories added on to this down into uh, the RTV6 viewing area. Again, this is Wednesday. Day. Prior to that, it's just more rain. Then the colder air will catch the remaining moisture. I'll go ahead and focus on Wednesday here for you. Temperatures, they'll come above freezing, but I think fall in the afternoon as we continue to get more snow. This will be critical because even with the accumulating snow expected in central Indiana, some of this will be melting, kind of a slushy mess. But as temperatures come down to freezing or below, that would change road conditions considerably as we go through the day. 7 a.m., Wednesday, Terre Haute to Indy to Muncie Northwest, ongoing snow that's dropping to the south and east. We get to mid-afternoon, should have some widespread light snow. Then as we get to the evening hours, packing up and moving to the Buckeye State, off to the east and left behind. Just to show you the variability, these are four different forecast models for Indianapolis. Anywhere from an inch of snow to the high side would be four inches of snow. So we'll wait and see how this plays out as we go through the next 48 hours. Rain to the north this evening with scattered light showers dotting the rest of central Indiana. Temperatures there in the 40s. That won't change. You'll wake up with temperatures still in the 40s. It does change, though, as we fall from that morning high Wednesday. Temperatures Thursday and Friday will struggle just to get back to 30. There are the showers tomorrow. Through the day, periods of rain should be fairly widespread 1 o'clock. By the time we get to 7, you begin to see a transition to some snow off to the north and west as that colder air arrives. Lives. Temperatures through the day tomorrow all around 40 degrees. Your rainfall potential between now and tomorrow night, an additional quarter to maybe half inch rainfall amounts in some spots. Wednesday, it is about snow potential. Temperatures falling from highs in the mid 30s. That wind will be strong out of the northeast and north, gusting to 30 miles per hour. That may cause some visibility issues as well with the snow. So all eyes on Wednesday. Once that's in the rear view mirror, temperatures struggle to hit 30 Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Dave? Kevin, thanks. Good evening to you. Uh, from an injury standpoint, there have been better starts to the second half of the season. Friday, Victor Oladipo tweaks his lower back. And then last night, a far more severe injury for Jeremy Lamb up in Toronto. Second quarter, he was just trying to finish the fast break when he lands awkwardly. The news today, he suffered a torn left ACL, a torn lateral meniscus, and a fracture in the lower portion of his thigh bone. He'll need surgery and is now out for the season. Josh Victor Oladipo today after practice on what Jeremy is going through. You kind of go through life and when tough things happen, you know, you say you, you can only imagine what you're going through, but I know exactly what he's going through. I know his head is kind of all over the place. And it's unfortunate uh, how it happened and stuff like that. But just got to embrace the process. Trust it. There's a lot to learn through the process. Trust me. They host the Hornets tomorrow night. Meanwhile, in College Hoop, it's another round of IU and Purdue this coming Thursday night. And who knows what to expect, really, based on what happened over the weekend. Brad Brown with the Sports Extra Spotlight. Sunday in Bloomington felt a lot like a 40-minute version of IU's entire season. The Hoosiers got off to a blistering start, putting together a 19-point lead in the first 15 minutes. But after that, a 30-5 run by Penn State turned the margin to minus 6 for Indiana. We took a huge punch. You know, that was, that was uh, you know, at times this season, that, that punch has hurt us a lot more. You know, we, 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 were, we weren't shook. 
We found a way to kind of hang in there. We had a lot of guys step up and make some plays. But IU was able to finish strong in this one. Key plays from the likes of Race Thompson and Justin Smith. And a 68-60 win moves IU much closer to making the big dance. I feel like we've been taking care of the ball. We've been going inside out. We've been playing efficient offense, and we've been playing decent defense. So I feel like we've been doing a really well all-around job. The coach told me that um, just to keep being aggressive, and so um, if your coach has confidence in you, then um, that's all you really need for me especially. So um, I just kept going up strong, and some of them didn't fall today, but um, I'm just going to keep having confidence and keep going up with as hard as I can. ESPN's Bracketology currently has Indiana as a 10 seed, one of the last four buys. And how about an intriguing Intriguing matchup against Butler in round one. Time will tell if that holds up. As for Purdue, their struggles at home continued. Michigan pounded the Boilermakers on Saturday, 71-63, their first win at Mackey Arena since 2014. When, you know, shots don't go down or we can't pick up, whether that's the passion or the morale or whatever you want to, you know, kind of categorize it, um, you know, just hanging our head and allowing one mistake to lead to two and just simply compounding um, our mistakes. Right now, most experts have the Boilers on the outside of March Madness. So high pressure for Thursday's game. For IU, a chance to lock it in. For Purdue, maybe one final chance to avoid being locked out. Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports. Uh, Going to be a big one Thursday night. Finally, first and foremost, though, from the Arizona Nationals, friend of the show, Tommy Johnson Jr. in the funny car final against his teammate Jack Beckman. Beckman got him with their, with their action time, but tire smoke from there and Avon's tire. Tommy Johnson Jr., big win, 18th of his career. a boy, TJ. The News 6 continues after this. Promotion for just $259 a month. Welcome back. Today's RTV6 photo of the day comes to us from Sue Lee. Sue shared this outstanding picture that she took of Monument Circle. The Soldiers and Sailors Monument really stands out at night. Yeah, it is really pretty, right? Can I say one thing? Go ahead. I'm ready, Sue, to move you to the photo of the month because I wow. think they're about halfway up the monument to the left. See that? That might be Venus that she captured in there as well. Oh, look at that. I'm giving you credit look for it. Look at wow. you catching that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Hey, make sure you send us your photo of the day. Email it to news at wrtv.com. And if we choose your picture, we will air it on the news at 6 o'clock. Forecast of the week. It's the middle of the week. That's a concern really starting probably tomorrow afternoon in the Chicago area, north central Illinois. That winter storm watch could see six inches or snow or more in those spots. The rain that's building southeast Missouri will come through Kentucky and into southern Indiana tonight. There it is by one o'clock in the morning. So that's the most steady rain that we expect tonight in the southern half of the state. Thanks, Kevin, for that. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you right back here at 7.